I was always choreographing when I was at school, at the Royal Ballet School. Uh, they used to hold annual choreographic competitions, which I started uh, when I was 11. Uh, for my first one, I think I got third prize. And um, it was uh, after that I kind of continued, just, just bit by bit, not thinking that it would ever turn into a career. Obviously, I was at the school training to become the best dancer that I possibly could. And when I got my contract with the Royal Ballet, when Monica Mason invited me to join, she was um, very adamant that she wanted to nurture me in terms of choreographic development as well. Um, so I worked my butt off as a dancer. Um, my technical ability, I don't think, was the best in my class, and yet I got my dream job somehow. So um, I worked as hard as I could as a dancer and spent eight fabulous seasons with the company, dancing much more than I thought I ever would, um, still choreographing alongside. And then it got to that point where both are such a full-time job and the commitment and the dedication that you need to put in to both uh, aspects of choreography and dancing, um, there just wasn't enough time in the day. If there had been that extra 25th hour, I think I could have um, carried on doing both. But it was a very quick decision. I think any person who gives up dancing tells you how hard it is to stop doing the thing that you have loved since you were a child. Um, but it turned out to be quite a, um, a good decision in the end. I think having been in the corps de ballet for such a long time definitely helps me when it comes to using a big group of people. Uh, I love working with soloists, pas de deux, but actually sometimes the thing that excites me most is moving a big group of people around the stage and being able to generate something that is entertaining and fun and makes the most of a company as a whole. Uh, ballet companies are based on a hierarchy system with the principals at the top and the corps de ballet uh, filling the majority of the, the bulk of the company, but there is not one person that is irrelevant to a company. Everyone has their place and when a ballet is being created I want to make everyone feel just as needed and as special as the next person so it's being able to find something for absolutely everyone so they feel involved and they feel used and, and needed when it comes to creating a new work. I think the one wonderful thing about dance is that you don't use words. It's something that can be understood by everyone. Um, and so sometimes, actually, the way to get across what you want is to show it instead of trying to explain it. There, there are times when explanation is necessary, but there are also times when words aren't enough, and that's why movement takes over, or why dance takes over, or why natural human emotions, why we have body language, why we move in a certain way, why our facial expressions change, or why we laugh, or why we cry. I think they're the fundal elements of being a human and actually dance can really show them because when you're lost for words your body takes over and that's the wonderful thing about telling stories in dance is that you get that quality that everyone can understand whether you're a trained dancer or not that suddenly the pedestrian aspects take over so in rehearsal yeah I do jump up and um, try a lot and I will throw myself into any role and make a complete fool of myself in front of the dancers especially people who I've never met before um, but I enjoy it and I'm sure there's going to come a time when I won't be able to get up and do it so I'm making the most of it. <laughs>